Check it and check, check, check. What's up guys, welcome back. It's another trying new makeup video, although these are not first impressions. They very seldom are. And a lot of this stuff is even more makeup that I got at the Sephora sale. <laughs> the main thing, well, not even the main thing, but the complexion thing being the new It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Plus Nude Glow. I used to love the It Cosmetics complexion products back when I needed full coverage. I don't prefer full coverage anymore. I'm really excited that they came out with this. So it is an SPF 40 UVA UVB sunscreen. It is homosalate, octosalate, octocrylene, so chemical sunscreen, but not octanoxate, which I am you know, very sensitive to. And I have a bunch of other stuff that we're going to be trying out today. I've got new shades in the puff paints from Natasha Denona. I have this new, where is it? Oh no, oh no khaki, oh no fluffy. I also have this, this came in this Good Vibes Beauty Box from a, it's like a thing that Aether Beauty organized, but it contained a bunch of other conscious beauty companies. I'm not sure if this is exclusive to that box. It's not, it comes out on Earth Day. So if you didn't get the beauty box or you don't plan on getting the beauty box, comes out on Earth Day, which I think is April 22nd. But this is the Citrine Quad, and my goodness, my goodness, is she beautiful. So I'm gonna be trying to make something really beautiful happen with that today. We've got new blushes. We have a new concealer that I might not use. <laughs> We've got Natasha Denona little uh, topper guy. I have a new Natasha Denona contour powder. I have a whole bunch of really, really beautiful things. This is an excessively long intro and we're just going to focus on making something really gorgeous happen today. So I hope you're excited about it. Happy Friday, happy sunshine, happy springtime. I'm really in the vibe today. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi. Hello. So I've got sunscreen on and I've worn this It Cosmetics Nude Glow a couple of three times now and two times I wore it on its own and one time I mixed it with the In Beauty Face Glaze. I'm going to just put a little bit of this in with it today because I do think that they really, really go beautifully together. So I have this in the shade light. No, no, I don't. I have this in the shade fair and it's a lovely shade match for me. Really, really pretty. A perfect hybrid of my skin plus my pigmentation. So it's kind of a ratio like that, that little light spot being the In Beauty Face Glaze. I'm just gonna, mm -hmm. look at that shade match, look at it. It has a sunscreeny smell to it, but like a lot of us wear perfumes that have sunscreeny smells to them. In fact, in that Good Vibes Beauty Box that was gifted to me, by the way, it's not sponsored or anything, but it was gifted to me, there was a perfume from a company that I had never tried before called Sky, something in Sky. I'll put it on the screen. And it is a scent called 1111, you know, like the Rowan palette. And it is so off the beaten path for what I would typically like, but it's like somebody mixed Fresh Life with something like a little bit more deep and summery. I don't know. It's really, really lovely. Speaking of really, really lovely, look at that. It is definitely able to build more than some of the other skin tints that I just, that I just <laughs> reviewed in that big skin tint video. I'll go ahead and add this one and all of its specs, as it were, to that spreadsheet that I made for you guys so that it'll still be like a reference point even though I didn't have it in my hands when I made that video. But you get 1.08 fluid ounces. I want to say, you know, it's pretty typical It Cosmetics kind of prices, probably in like the $40 range. Oh, and I wanted to say it's kind of almost like a satin finish. It's really nice. It kind of reminds me a little bit, maybe a lot of it, <laughs> of the Fenty Eavesdrop. Something I bought to use in this video was the Conceal the Deal from Lawless. This is their new full coverage concealer. Oh, the storied past of a Lawless concealer. I was the only person who liked, the, the only person on planet Earth who liked the last concealer that she put out, which was like back in 2019. And a lot of people's containers just came like empty. It was like it was whipped and then in transit, it all like compacted back down again and no one could get any actual product out of the container, which I thought was funny. 
Either way, I liked it. Nobody else did. This kind of reminds me of it, but it's creamier, but it still kind of dries down matte. It is quite pretty, but as you can see, I have gone and gotten myself far too light of a shade. Again, I keep doing that. So it's pretty and I just need to go to Sephora and see if they have it in stock and try and switch it out because I want to be able to give you guys a real review on that. But I am a little bit unpleasantly surprised at how mad it is, but I don't even know why I'm surprised because we're talking about Lawless here. Lawless was always the pioneer in context, I guess you would say, of making clean beauty ingredients wise, you know, and making that claim for her brand and not worrying about the clean beauty aesthetic, like having a more like full beat aesthetic. Oh, also BK Beauty just sent me, I don't think it's new, but I think that they're now selling them in singles. They sent me the entire set of the Angie Hot and Flashy brush set. I have not watched Angie, but her name has like circulated around me for a very long time. I need to just check her channel out. I think that the channel name is the cleverest thing in the world. It took me a minute. I was like, Hot and Flashy. Oh, Hot Flashes. That's funny. <laughs> I think that's great. Either way, man, I had all these BK brushes, you know, that I have loved. By the way, BK is owned by Lisa J, who is a, you know, fellow, and I don't live there anymore, but a fellow Austinite, and also a <laughs> friend of Kiki's. So it's like we have a mutual friend in Kiki. Kiki also used to live in Austin. And so she's always been kind of in my periphery. She's such a sweet, sweet person. And she's taught me a lot about makeup on her channel and on her Instagram. And so when I tried her brushes, you know, I expected them to be really, really good, but like they're even better than I expected them to be. They're just so luxurious feeling. And I had a whole bunch of them already. And then they sent me this hot and flashy set and there are a bunch of brushes that I had never tried before. They're all really, really unique. But this one has been my favorite so far. This is the A504. Look at how teeny tiny that is, but it's still a domed blender brush. I love this. It's like so the perfect meeting of precision and like blending. It's fantastic. So I went ahead and sprung for these. You guys know I have recommended since the moment that I tried the shade Daria, I've recommended the Natasha Denona Puff Paint formula, but I have only tried Daria up until this order. And so I did order this one, which is just called Tan. And then the other one, which I think is just called like Berry or something like that. It doesn't have like a person name the way that Daria does. So I'm gonna use this one. I don't think I'm gonna use the berry colored one today. It is so pigmented. It's so pigmented. <sighs> I don't know, we'll see. I kinda wanna do like the bronzer and then my eyes and then we'll decide on blush kind of thing. But this does not disappoint in terms of the formula and the payoff, you know, kind of translating from one color to the next. So I really, really dig this one. I'm gonna try not to get this on my new dress. By the way, this dress, I kind of bought it because I thought it would come by my birthday. It did not, but it is a Farm Rio dress that they just put out and it was on pre-order on Saks and it was under $200, which I think is unbelievable for like all the detail and everything. It's so gorgeous. And it just came in the mail yesterday and I just couldn't help myself. I think I'm going to wear it this this Sunday. It'll be kind of like my Easter dress for photos and stuff because we're gonna have our first ever Easter egg hunt. Oh yeah. <laughs> Simon finally like understands what it is to, you know, the, the concept of a game like that. And so it's gonna be so freaking much fun. And uh, I think, you know, the grandparents are gonna come out and everything and it's gonna be really, really cute. But yeah. This, uh, this dress, it does look really fragile, but it's not. It's like this really beautiful, really strong kind of lace. I'll still get it dry cleaned. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. But, um, but yeah, I was like just very, very pleasantly surprised by it. It's been something that like, as soon as I got the notification that it is shipped, I was like, I've been thinking about this ever since I ordered it. All right, this is gorgeous. It is not new at all, I don't think, but it's something that I stumbled across on the website. It's like every, 
like Sephora sale, I sort of think about brands that I've been meaning to deep dive on because price is sometimes prohibitive. And also brands that have had things that are out for a while, it's kind of hard to attract attention to their older products unless they come out with something new that I'm interested in. And Natasha Nona mostly comes out with eyeshadow palettes and I don't really love her eyeshadow palette formula, but I remembered loving her highlighter and I saw this and I was like, that's a really, really good contour shade for my skin. There are several shades in this. This is a one light and I wanted to try it. I kind of, I don't know. I've tried doing it on like a contour brush. I've tried doing it on, cause it's a powder, but I've tried doing it on like a cream contour brush kind of thing. And I think I'm just going to use like this guy, you know, my eco tools fluffy guy, because it's pretty good at like picking up product and not picking up too much. I just applied that like it was a bronzer anyway, uh, and not picking up too much of the like moisture on my skin because I didn't powder. But this is beautifully sheer. I feel like it goes really, really nicely with like my freckle color, you know, do a little bit of that, a little bit of that. And it's just nice to have something that I can sort of apply liberally that doesn't run away from me immediately. And it's also, you know, it's so funny. Everybody I've been watching lately has been mirroring, not mirroring my thoughts like they are copying me. I just mean, I hear my own thoughts coming out of other people's mouths in a lot of ways. People being like, I don't really know why, but I'm kind of back into powder blushes and powder bronzers and stuff. And I'm like, me too. It's faster. And also you can achieve the look of dewy skin without everything being a cream product in your routine. Mainly, I just douse everything in finishing spray. A finishing spray is like the final decision on the texture you want your makeup to be. And it's not a bad thing to lean really hard on your favorite finishing spray, you know? I personally really, really enjoy MAC Fix Plus. I like the Dewy set from Anastasia. Those are pretty much my faves right now. And if you really, really need something to like hold all, all, all day, then, you know, you might be able to justify the price of the, uh, the Hourglass one. So, I like this. I like this because I'm not too light. <laughs> Sometimes things just get so light so fast and now I've become kind of afraid of that happening, but it's better to be able to go in after the fact and, you know, doctor that than to have to work against it the whole time. So I am going to go ahead and start in with this. Let's go ahead and swatch this. I have not touched into this. You guys know I love the Aether Beauty formula. And if this is only an exclusive to the box, I will just link the box. If not, I will kind of link both, but I have not actually tried this color profile yet. I just opened this box this morning. So very, very pretty warm golds and browns. Pretty, pretty orange. I mean, you would think citrine, right? I'm a big fan of citrine. I own some citrine jewelry and stuff. It is, if you believe and take stock in such things, the stone of abundance, of wealth, of attracting all kinds of monetary goodness for yourself. So let's do this one first, this is the most like neutral shimmer shade right here. That one, that's kind of what I'm gonna go for all over my lid. <sighs> I don't have much on my lids, so it's not super tacky. Okay, that's beautiful. It's kind of pulling a little bit of the like more light parts of my brown eyes out. Cause you know, brown eyes still can have nuance, right? I might have a little bit of like a just a little bit of lighter brown or maybe a honey color in them, a little bit. And it's just cool when something can bring out something unexpected in my eyes, you know? Oh, I just, mm, that shadow could just be a single. That is such an interesting color. It's like, it's brown, but it's still also kind of peach. That's, that's, very, very pretty. And also I'm the, the reason that I wanted to do this before I did my blush was because I knew that this was going to kind of steer me in a direction as far as like whether I wanted to go peach or whether I wanted to go kind of more pink or something like that. So remains to be seen. You guys know I've been kind of more into tonal looks lately. And so we'll go with that. And then I will take something a little bit bigger than that hot and flashy one. I'll go in with this in a minute, but uh, yeah, like the, 202, this is the Travel 202. And I'm gonna go in with that matte shade that's like quite a pretty like rusty peach, orange brown, 
a little khaki. I'm trying to work in a little bit lower light today because it is so beautifully sunny outside, but that also means I can't quite see what I'm doing as well. I have gotten so many messages about my questions around LASIK and apparently there are other options too, but like, you know, more uh, sophisticated or more modern versions of it. There's something somebody said like SMILE and then there was another acronym that I cannot remember. And uh, yeah, so I am, um, I'm still, I'm still contemplating that, especially since like, <laughs> All of my glasses have met some kind of horrible fate lately. My child like destroyed one of them and like ripped one of the little nose pads off. And when I tried to glue it back on, it just like fell off again. And then it like cut my nose and I was like, never again. And then we got a puppy and Mike took his eyes off of him for a second. And he chewed up the edges of my uh, tortoise shell ones that everybody likes so much. And I still wear them, but they're not comfortable. And I need to go get a new eye exam in order to get a new pair because Warby Parker is obnoxious like that, even though your eye exam lasts five years in New Jersey. I got my last eye exam in Texas where your prescription only lasts a year. Like my eyes changed when I moved. Yeah. The whole thing is like, do I want to go get another eye exam? Do I want to go get a new pair of glasses? Or do I just want to go get a sick fam? You know? You know? All right. Hmm. This, I don't know if we can get around, you know, using that. It's like the citrine of it all, right? It's a quad. Like when you have a quad, you kind of just want to use all of them, so we'll put that guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. For all of my folks who like a good, nuanced, juicy orange shade, that is just quite excellent. Quite, quite excellent. The differences in these colors, like, sorry, in the textures of each color, like this one is really beautifully satin, but this one is quite like a rich, like almost a glitter, you know? Aether's, all of Aether's formulas are a little like different. They're a little bit more subtle, but I feel like that makes them wearable for more people. But they're not subtle in like saturation, they're subtle in texture, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? We're not dealing with something that's like this super, super, like fragile, fractal glitter. Oh, I'm using the hot and flashy one now. I have, again, I have the whole set, but this is the one I just, mm, it's so darn cute. And I'm gonna take that shade that I started with. That's kind of that like more, I mean, it's probably warm, but in comparison to all of these, like in context, it looks very, very neutral. I just kind of don't feel like you can go wrong. I just gotta smash them on, you know? And then there's this really incredible, like, it's almost just like a warm champagne. It doesn't go all the way to gold, you know? Uh, that's gonna go on my inner corner. Yeah, don't mind this red spot on my face. I'm just going to keep scratching. <laughs> I will say this, um, this palette is particularly crumbly. Like it's a little bit more prone to fallout than some of the other ones that I've tried from Aether. The color story is gorgeous, but like I almost want to use all the shades wet, you know? Oh, you know what I could do? Just use one of these. It's just one of the, is this Dior, I think? Why would I have a Dior one? Oh no. Does that mean I return to that palette without its little spongy? Oh, that's terrible of me. What a horrible person I am. That's awful. I wouldn't blame them if they just sent it back to me. They were like, you jerk. That's such, that's such a dumb oversight. I am so sorry, Sephora. Yeah, I, I'm having a little, I'm having a little trouble here getting this to stick. I should have used a primer, but they are so smooth. It feels so goofy using a tool like this, but at the same time, it is very useful <laughs> for precision. All right, I'm just gonna take my brush here and just blend. It doesn't really have anything on it. In fact, what I've been doing is using that Natasha Denona contour powder. We'll see if I end up doing that. I kind of feel like I'm going to because this does kind of go so warm. There's nothing wrong with that, it's a quad. You know what I mean? There are gonna be limitations when you only have four shadows, but this is going to like pull a little bit more coolness back in, in a way that's like, you know, do you even need a shade like this in a, a quad especially, but a palette at all, if you know that you have it 
in your contour. I'm just using that to kind of hit the outside of my lid here, a little outer V moment. Pull that up. That's very soft, but it's also very like juicy orange. You know, it's giving, it's giving me this really, really pretty kind of like summer energy. Love that. All right, so something that I feel like is obviously missing here is a little bit of like coverage underneath my eyes. So I am actually going to reach for the Lawless Concealer real quick and just see about like a touch here and a touch there, touch here, touch there, you know? Just to kind of give my face a little bit of lightness. Like, I don't know if this, this is what this brush is for, but this is the Angie Hot and Flashy 506. I think that's for concealer. Such a good little precise brush. I really like that her collection seems to be about smaller brushes, like a little bit more precise. I need to go check out her channel. Look at that. It's a great concealer formula. Look at how it just kind of like blurred that without leaving some kind of weird texture stamp. And you can use like with so, 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 so little on the brush. And maybe I will just keep this really, really light shade. I don't know. Is it too much? You guys let me know. Cause it's nice sometimes to be able to use something as a highlight. I mean, obviously this looks bizarre because I don't want to be blush on or anything, but I'm liking it so far. All right. I have several blushes to try today. And I think that the one that I want to use is actually this one. This is a new one that I got from Kaja. This is called the Whipped Dream. Kaja is the one that I had just tried when I got, oh my God, that's gonna be perfect. I just tried Kaja for the first time recently because I tried that Beauty Bento and it was great. So I'm just gonna put some of this on the back of my hand because I don't know exactly how it behaves yet. <laughs> you know, I don't feel really confident just throwing it on my face. Let's see. I think my brush basically just soaked most of that up. It's also like kind of close to a tan color. So it's gonna, woo, it's gonna blend into what I have on a little bit more, but it, it's just a really, really pretty, this shade is uh, called Coral Souffle. And it's like a pretty slightly muted coral color. Hello? Thank you. So I'm actually being quite a bit more aggressive here and seeing what we can get out of it. This is a different color story for me because you know, it's been winter. I tend to focus on the, the pinks and the berries and the lavenders of it all. We're going very apricot. And I still probably will cool it off a little bit with something just to make it look a little more at home on me because this is kind of like trying to shoehorn my skin tone into something that it doesn't do quite so naturally. But all you olive complected gals and guys and whomever, I would definitely recommend this, like this whole color story really, but like that little eyeshadow quad, that's a lot of fun. It does, it has to be the right orange, the right peach on me because everything kind of wants to turn into like a wrong color bronzer on me. So the jury's out on whether that shade works quite so well and it does pick up a little bit more than I would like. Like I would definitely recommend the Natasha Denona Puff Paint formula over that, but there are only three shades in the Natasha Denona Puff Paint. So, you know, I'm gonna kind of smooth this out. I will powder eventually and it will kind of blur all of this, but for now, we kind of have a little bit of a socket situation going on. Let's see, what else have we? I did get a lot of blushes. Oh yeah, I have that one from Tarte. I don't know what, it's like me and Amanda kind of like shared a brain this sale in a lot of ways because we ended up buying a lot of the same stuff. I think that that's gonna pull the right amount of pink and it's like very, very pretty and dewy. So this is the Tarte Exposed Cheek Stain. I'm gonna try this guy real quick because this is very dewy and a little lower on pigment i'm just going to put that kind of on the high points here get a little bit more texture yeah and you see it kind of pulls a little bit more pink into it a little bit more of a sunburn vibe instead of a orange crayon vibe i talked about how i don't really like this but that i'm going to keep it around because it's a good way to touch up where i have kind of over brightened underneath my eyes or something. And this is the Say Translucent Air Set. It is not translucent, but it is uh, a little bit darker than my skin tone. So it's like a good way to 
blur all this in a way that doesn't keep exacerbating the pearlescence issue. And applied with a light hand, it's not going to show up like, you know, hot yellow on me. But if I apply this, you know, to a spot that's particularly dewy, it will kind of like leave a yellowy splotch on me, which is just really not awesome at all. I have absolutely no promises that I'm not going to just like pull out my <laughs> Dior <laughs> backstage rosy glow because um, I kind of feel like I still want to cool this off, but I'm gonna go ahead and do brows and liner and lashes, you know, my mascara and everything. And then we will, we will strategize from there. blush in some way. And I think it just needs to like pull the pink back from my lips here. So I'm gonna do what I said I was gonna do. And it is the Dior Rosy Glow in 001 Pink. I didn't end up getting the peach one yet because it never went back in stock online. But when I go possibly switch out this Conceal the Deal, I'll take a look and see. But it just does a good job of keeping what I've already done, you know, the identity of it, but also it's just a color adjuster basically. And then I do have a little bit of my Lily Lolo Mineral Concealer here, and I'm going to use that to just, I don't know what that is. My mom, my period, so like everything, everything on my face is just out to get me, but this is a good way of like blurring those little indiscretions. I think that for a look like this, a lot of times you start feeling like you need more coverage because uh, the things you're used to covering up are distracting to your eye when really it's just about very, very selectively pinpoint covering and brightening in specifically those areas, you know? And then you don't have to like add coverage everywhere. It's just about taking down some of that like shadow that's in the corner, inner corner of my eyes and stuff. a vibe. I think that this is something that I, I, it's pretty much what I pictured, I guess. Let's do some lips here. The only, my, the only lip that I picked up in this order is actually this one. And this is the Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump from Tarte in the shade Mixed Berries. And I don't know y'all, that doesn't look like mixed berries to me, but it's a very, very pretty color. This is plumping. I like it a lot. Kind of reminds me of the M Cosmetics or the Makeup by Mario. M Cosmetics is not plumping. Makeup by Mario is a little bit bigger than this, but it's like a combo. I don't know what berries they were mixing. <laughs> Those are no berries I've ever seen, but beautiful nonetheless. Okay, so two things I wanna do here. One, I want to take a little bit of that Dior and put it into my eye look because that is a trick that I always do and I feel like it's just a little incongruous. I just want them to look like they're living on the same face of makeup. And sometimes it's pretty undetectable that you've even done it because it doesn't like read necessarily as like, you know, purple or, you know, whatever this is, pink, but um, it just makes everything look a little bit more intentional or less distracting, you know? And on my eyeliner, I have been going with a very soft line with my Revlon Color Stay in chocolate, and then doing just a very, very tiny line right on my lash line with my Guide Beauty Guideliner. It's just a softer 
whole look, you know? The, the softer I can get, the, the better, really. And then I have this Natasha Denona Chrome, Chroma Crystal Top Coat. I feel like it really goes with what I have going on, you know? It's like that perfect kind of shimmery peach. I'm just going to top coat my lid a little. It's very subtle, but it's very pretty. I don't know that I would like recommend running out and buying this. I don't think it makes that big of a difference, especially since this kind of texture exists in a lot of palettes. And this one's particularly stiff. It doesn't have really any squishiness to it at all. It's like a very, very tightly packed powder, but I do think that that added a nice kind of wet look, nice little finishing touch. And then I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of this Aether, what is this? The Desert Moon Illuminating Oil. It's basically the old highlighter that I love so much, but it has been suspended in a really beautiful skincare oil. And I like to just kind of take a brush because a brush or a sponge is going to kind of soak some of the oil up and leave more of the actual, you know, shimmer. So super, super subtle, but it's gonna give this really, really beautiful texture on the skin. And I just tap so that it doesn't like take my makeup off. You know, there's no such thing as an oil that's not going to take makeup off. <laughs> That's what oils do. It just kind of makes everything look a little bit more worn in, in a good way, in an intentional way. The only thing I'm not really feeling is this lip. It's just like not giving me what I want. It's a nice plumping sensation. And I'm not saying it's like a bad color. It's just not enough. Here's what's going to happen. I have my khaki lip liner here. I'm gonna, this one's broken. I've jostled it too much. Don't sleep on the khaki lip liner for freckles, guys. It really, it really does it. But yeah, I think it's just too much color. Ooh, ooh, you know what it needs? I'll be right back. Look, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So I've got my Tom Ford Gloss Luxe in Love Lust, and it's this lovely, kind of like cool lavender, very, very similar to the Dior, and it's a fabulous adjuster shade. It's always good to have something like that in your collection that can help you make something more wearable, even if it's just for that face of makeup. It doesn't have to be because you hate a color. And you know, it's just like sometimes it's the color you wanted to wear that day and sometimes you get it on and you're like, nah, it needs a little something, you know? And for me, everything just needed a little bit of cool pink today. All right, I'm gonna move you guys out and we will kind of chat briefly about my final thoughts on each of these products. Yes, yes, I love this. I love this look. It makes me so happy, it's perfect. Dystopian cowgirl fortune teller. Also, I switched out my whole stack here. We got some, like a set of hoops. I got a new, ear cuff, and then I kept my little huggy right there, and then, not huggy, whatever it is, it's a crawler thing, and my safety pin, so. Yeah, all right, let's begin at the beginning here. This, the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Nude Glow, yes. <laughs> this brings IT Cosmetics back into rotation for me because they were all so high coverage. They had that beautiful dewiness to them, but it was a shellacking of makeup. This is so finessed. It's so pretty. I hope it doesn't break me out or anything. I can't really tell yet, even though I have worn it now, this will be the fourth time. I can't tell because I'm breaking out anyway because of my period. So I will let you guys know, uh, but I don't think it's going to because it doesn't have any like red flag ingredients in it for me. And it does have some chemical sunscreen. X, Y, and Z, just, I just think the world of this. It's so utterly gorgeous on the skin. Mm, 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 so pretty. It reminds me a lot of the eavesdrop though. Like if you have the eavesdrop and you love the eavesdrop, you do not need to buy this. But if you don't own that one and you are looking for a 
flexible skin tint that is going to be better for more combo, even oily skin. This does have a more matte finish. I really, really like this. This is such a good color. And I always, I always like Natasha Denona's powder formulas, like her actual face powder formulas. So um, I'm kind of thinking about buying her uh, highlighter again. I really, really like it, but I'm also, I, I really love this Aether one just for like summertime. It just gives you this really, really beautiful glow on your skin. I don't know, it's, it's wonderful. Like you don't want to reach up and touch it because it's oil on your skin. But at the same time, I don't want to reach up and touch my makeup if I don't have to anyway. But regardless, beautiful, beautiful color. Easy to sleep on this because I don't think she makes that big of a deal out of a lot of her complexion products. She really just, you know, is like flashy, flashy about the eyeshadow palettes. And so, um, yeah, this is really beautiful. I like it a lot. This little citrine palette, absolutely gorgeous. Hopefully I was able to kind of showcase the strengths and possibly the weaknesses of this color story because she's got a lot of quads. First of all, I do feel like this one's a little harder to use in terms of just the emollients of the formulas, these are really soft compared to her other formulas. So if you're looking for something that's got more saturation to it, you know, and you're prepared to be a little more careful with something, a little bit more tender with it because it is a little more tender of a formula, then definitely this is really, really beautiful. I like that these are a perfect combo of desaturated colors but very saturated formulas. Do you know what I mean? Like this has a lot of white in it, but at the same time, it's a rich enough matte that it's gonna show up on everybody and not look chalky. I think that there's something, you know, definitely to be said for that, like even if it's lighter than your skin tone. So yeah, I think this is absolutely gorgeous. It's obviously a citrine. It's going to lean quite peachy orange. So just bear that in mind, but I really, really like it. The Crystal Top Coat from Natasha Denona, I expected to like this more. I expected to be more excited about it. It's kind of like not enough of one thing. It doesn't wanna be all the way to a, an hourglass scattered light. It doesn't wanna be all the way to like a Wayne Goss Celestial or like a Pat McGrath glitter or something. It's just kind of exactly what it purports. My camera cut me off. It's exactly what it purports itself to be. It is not quite as delicious of an experience as I was expecting, but it's very pretty and I wouldn't kick it out of bed. All right, let's talk about all the things that I use on my cheeks today. The puff paint, you guys know, I love, and I still really, really love these. I will use the berry colored one at some point in a look in the future, but it tends to take over. It's very, very highly pigmented. I like it very much, but it's like, I need to almost let it just be the star of the show. That's not the case with the tan one, and it's not the case with the Daria one. I still absolutely recommend this formula. I recommend it over the Kaja. The Kaja's fine. It just isn't light enough on the skin that it still doesn't kind of like pick up my my makeup and move it around. It's just a little harder to work with and I do appreciate that like there's something about that Natasha Denona one that just like is able to live on top of everything else without disturbing it or disturbing it very much. I don't find that it disturbs it at all and I can just kind of tap it in and it requires so little work to blend it and I just found that this one like picked back up pretty quickly. You know, it just was something that I felt like was a little bit more fussy. So I would recommend this over this. Also, I mean, obviously there's only three shades in this and they're all weird, but I would prefer that over how like in between and kind of non-committal all these shades are. And I feel like that's kind of how this Tarte release is too. I mean, look, I get, I get that Tarte has a, if an ain't broke, don't fix it kind of vibe, but they're still running like the shade Tipsy. <laughs> I have a lip gloss in Tipsy that's like 10 years old. You'd think that they would iterate a little bit and maybe they are, but I, I don't, I don't really see it. I do really like this formula, but I think that I've like had this before. I just wonder what Tarte is like, you know what I mean? It's like, they're very, very scared to touch a toe out of their very, very well-worn path. So, you know, this is also not a run out by it situation. Like, I think it's gonna be very, very pretty on top of just a, a sunscreen face. You know, it's like a really pretty, super, super lightweight kind of dewy blush and it's pretty. And I think that it like, you know, it worked today, but it's not something that I think is like that unique. As I'm recommending things that you spend your money on, I don't think this is gonna like blow your mind or change your life. The same kind of goes for the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. Now, they did go a little bit out of the box, well, at least out of the Tarte box, 
on the colors here because they came out with one that looks a lot like Black Honey from Clinique and I have been hearing good things about it, at least from Miss Amanda Z. I am not a Black Honey fan, so I didn't buy that one. It's just not my thing. It's actually, I think it's called Black Cherry, which means it, and I saw pictures of it kind of wants to lean a little bit more of like a red wine kind of color, not duh, my shade, not my shade to wear on my lips, maybe on my cheeks, but like in such small amounts. But I do like mixed berries, even though I think it's a little bit of a misnomer. I do wish that it showed up a little bit like cooler. It, it looks like it's going to be very cool. And it's just kind of, again, like this very non-committal medium rose color, which probably will work for a lot of people. And I think that it's actually a really good introduction to makeup for people. You know, I think Tarte, I, I sit here and bag on them because I'm so passionate about color theory. But at the same time, I remember when I was first getting into makeup, Tarte was the most approachable makeup line in like the luxury space, the you know, the prestige space for me because they had so many palettes that were just like browns and pinks and golds and things like that. They had blushes that all just looked pretty pleasant. <laughs> all of their colors just looked kind of skin adjacent or at least white girl skin adjacent. I, I hope they, they kind of like, you know, expanded since then. But regardless, I really feel like I have a different point of view just because I do try so much makeup, but there's something so much to be said for like if you are kind of brand new to makeup or if you are just wanting something that's very, very everyday wearable and you don't want to like layer 15 blushes like I do or sit there and like think that critically about like the way that everything goes together, going and buying a full face of makeup from Tarte, it's probably going to look good on you. <laughs> because these colors are just kind of dialed in for skin. And it's not M Cosmetics in the sense that it's so nuanced that she's managed to make it look good on skin and also surprise you. These are very unsurprising ways of looking good on skin. And I think that that's a lot better than like Morphe, which is like, we checked the box. It's makeup, it functions. These are innovative formulas. It's just the colors don't really excite me, but they should excite me from a standpoint of this is a very, very good entryway for people who don't want to think that hard about color theory, you know? And I really, really like this formula. It reminds me a lot of Makeup by Mario one. Is that everything? I think it's everything. I, man, don't get it twisted, guys. I love this face of makeup. I just feel like I, I owe it to everyone watching to be as, not even just critical, but as like detailed as possible about every single product to make sure that, you know, you get it in your hands and it's exactly what you expected. And maybe it'll excite you more than you thought that it would even when you bought it. But I would rather always have the margin be that you're more pleasantly surprised by something than you thought that you would be. So I just want to give like every single nuance based on my experience, you know? So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is just like a very fun kind of juicy summery face of makeup for me. I'm just really getting in the spirit of springtime and everything. So I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.